ethical considerations in the context of psychology with exceptional children encompass a range of scenarios and responses. For example, when faced with misuse of psychologist's work, as seen in the case of an innovative assessment tool being plagiarized, legal action may be pursued to protect the psychologist's work while ensuring continued accessibility. In situations where ethics clash with legal regulations, such as psychologists wanting to provide a specific therapy not permitted locally, negotiation and adherence to regulations may occur. With alternative therapeutic approaches explored within legal boundaries if necessary. When organizational demands conflict with ethical principles, a psychologist may disclose their ethical obligations and propose ethical alternatives. Informal resolutions of ethical violations may also involve a colleague's private conversation, addressing concerns and suggesting corrective action. Reporting ethical violations become imperative when harm is at risk, involving not notifying relevant authorities, cooperation with ethics committees, refraining from improper complaints, and ensuring fairness in proceedings for complainants and respondents are essential aspects of upholding ethical standards in the practice of psychology with ethical, uh, with exceptional children. On section two of uh, what we call professional competence, in the ethical practice of psychology with exceptional children, several key principles apply. For example, maintaining boundaries of competence means that psychologists must refrain from offering expertise or services beyond their expertise. And instead, they refer their clients to specialists when necessary. Providing services in emergencies requires psychologists to offer immediate support when regular services are unavailable ensuring that no one is deprived of essential care during crisis. So psychologists must continually maintain their competence by attending relevant training and workshops, such as staying updated on research and therapeutic techniques. When making professional judgments, psychologists rely on established scientific principles and diagnostic criteria. Delegating work to others involves uh, ensuring that those performing tasks are qualified as seen in school psychologists delegating IQ testing to a trained psychometrician and informing the child and parents. Lastly, addressing personal problems and conflicts responsibly includes taking leave when facing health challenges and arranging for clients to receive care from trusted colleagues, prioritizing both their well-being and quality of care provided to exceptional children. On section three of uh, human relations, the ethical practice of psychology with exceptional children, there are several critical principles must be upheld. These principles include avoiding unfair discrimination and promoting equal opportunities for all children adhering to strict policies against sexual and other forms of harassment to maintain a safe, respectful environment. Prioritizing, of course, the well-being and safety of exceptional children while minimizing harm during therapeutic interventions and resolving ethical issues such as multiple relationships, conflicts of interest, third-party requests for services, exploitative relationships, cooperation with other professionals, obtaining informed consent, delivering services through organizations, and planning for interruption of psychological services. So these principles collectively ensure that psychologists provide ethical, inclusive, and responsible care to exceptional children and those they serve. The fourth one is uh, about confidentiality. So in the realm of confidentiality in psychology, there are several principles that must be considered. Psychologists are obligated to maintain confidentiality by securely storing client information, whether in physical or electronic form. So they must inform clients about limitations of confidentiality, such as when safety of individuals is at risk 
and obtain consent before recording client voices or images for specific purposes. When consulting with colleagues or making reports, psychologists should minimize invasion of privacy by disclosing only relevant information. So they should ensure that disclosed information is not misused and generally require client consent for disclosures unless mandated by law or authorized for specific purposes. So when seeking consultation, psychologists should avoid revealing, identifying information unless necessary. And they should refrain from using confidential information for other purposes without consent or legal authorization. Safeguarding the client's identity at all times. So these principles collectively ensure the ethical handling of, con of confidential information in psychology practice. The next one is about advertisements and public statements. In the realm of advertisements and public uh, statements in psychology, professionals are obliged to maintain accuracy professionalism and respect in their communication. So they must avoid false or deceptive statements in promotional materials, ensuring that they provide accurate information about their services without exaggeration. When making public statements, psychologists should communicate accurate and objective information, refrain from making demeaning remarks and clearly distinguish when they are speaking as professionals. In workshops and educational programs, professionals should accurately represent the intended audience, objectives, qualifications, and fees. In media presentation, psychologists should ensure that their statements align with professional knowledge and ethical guidelines while clarifying their role. Lastly, Soliciting testimonials from vulnerable individuals such as current therapy clients is discouraged to prevent undue influence and maintain ethical standards. So these principles collectively ensure that psychologists and psychometricians maintain integrity and professionalism in their public communications and avoid seeking personal gain or making false claims. On records and uh, fees in psychology, professionals must uphold ethical standards regarding records and fees. So this involves maintaining accurate records of their professional work, including assessment, results, and treatment plans while ensuring the confidentiality of these records through sec uh, secure storage methods. So psychologists should not with, uh, hold client records necessary for emergency treatment based solely on payment issues. So prioritizing the client's well-being. Additionally, clear and transparent financial arrangements, including fee structures and billing agreements, should be discussed and agreed upon with clients before initiating therapy to avoid misrepresentation mis of fees and ensure ethical financial practices in the field of psychology. So these principles are collectively promote accountability and responsible handling of client records, financial matters within the profession. On ethical standards and procedures in specific function, we subscribe to the following ethical standards and procedures related to specific functions of psychology practitioners. The first one is resolving ethical issues. So in the context of exceptional children, psychologists and psychometricians adhere to specific ethical standards and procedures for psychological assessment. These guidelines also apply to telepsychology and services provided to uh, clients abroad under their jurisdiction. On assessment, Professionals are guided by ethical principles to ensure responsible, accurate practices. So psychologists base their expert opinions and diagnostic statements on substantial information and appropriate assessment techniques conducting through assessments to support their conclusions. 
they obtain informed consent from clients providing information about the nature of assessments and potential risk and they choose relevant standardized and valid assessment tools so outdated test results are not relied upon and interpretation considers individual differences and the purpose of assessment with any reservations indicated. Test data and interpretation are only accessible to authorized individuals and assessment results are explained in clear language to clients and uh, relevant parties. Test security is maintained and psychologists do not endorse the use of assessment tools by unqualified individuals. So when constructing tests, psychologists ensure adherence to scientific knowledge, psychometric properties, validation, and standardization processes, ultimately promoting ethical, responsible assessment practices within the field of psychology. Next one is on therapy. Psychologists no, prioritize confidentiality, viewing it as an obligation arising from client trust. Disclosing information only when mandated by law or the client's safety. Informed consent is sought with psychologists explaining the nature of potential risk of therapy to clients or their parents. So the well-being of both therapists and clients is monitored systematically, ensuring that psychologists are fit to provide services. Professional boundaries are maintained to avoid emotional involvement detrimental to the client. So psychologists keep appropriate records securely, engage in continuing professional development to maintain competence and uh, consider the capacity of vulnerable populations. So referrals are discussed and obtained with client and consent, client consent and responsibility for clients during interruptions of therapy termination is handled orderly. Ensuring, of course, ethical and responsible therapy practices for exceptional children. Next one is education and training. <clears throat> so in the context of exceptional children, ethical standards and procedures guide psychologists and psychometricians and education and training programs. So these professionals ensure that education and training programs are thoughtfully designed to provide appropriate knowledge and experiences meeting licensure and certification requirements such as offering courses aligned with the needs of exceptional children in special education programs. So the programs provide accurate descriptions of their content, goals, and requirements to prospective participants. So helping them make informed decisions. So instructors maintain accurate and updated course materials and present psychological information accurately during teaching or training sessions. So students or supervisees are not required to disclose personal information unless they are necessary for evaluating their competence or well-being, respecting, of course, their privacy. Programs offering therapy as a requirement must allow students the option to select therapy from practitioners not affiliated with the program, preserving independence and privacy. So clear feedback processes are established in academic and supervisory uh, relationships, ensuring students and supervisees are evaluated based on their actual performance, such as providing regular feedback to student teachers in uh, special education programs. So finally, psychologists in education settings must not engage in sexual relationships with students or supervisees over whom they have evaluative authority. So maintaining professional boundaries and ethical conduct within training programs. Next, is on research. So in the context of exceptional children, ethical standards and procedures guide psychologists and researchers in conducting research with a strong focus on participant rights and dignity. So researchers prioritize the welfare and rights of research participants, obtaining informed consent and respecting cultural expectations. 
informed consent is obtained for recording voices or images unless specific conditions apply. Coercion of clients, students, or subordinates into research participation is avoided. And participants are informed of their right to participate. So researchers may dispense with uh, informed consent only in specific circumstances, such as when research involves standard educational practices. So fair compensation may be offered to participants avoiding undue um, inducements. So deception in research is generally avoided but may be justified by scientific value when necessary. So participants are debriefed after the study and observational research respects the privacy and well-being of individuals being observed. Human care and use of animals in research, care for the environment, and proper reporting of research results are essential ethical considerations as well. Plagiarism is strictly prohibited, and publication credit accurately uh, reflects contributions. Researchers share data for verification purposes under specific conditions, respecting confidentiality as well. Reviewers maintain confidentiality and propriety rights of authors when reviewing work and limitations of the study are acknowledged, ensuring transparency and ethical conduct in research involving exceptional children. So these standards and procedures uh, shall apply in the context of telepsychology again, eh? even in situation when psychological services are rendered for clients which remain within the jurisdiction of their license. 